poke through there. I don't know if that's a tumor or what. The cuff is in. Now, here's the tricky part. I'll just go like that. <laughs> okay, here's what you have to do. So you grab the tube. Grab it. Okay. Really? Pull the stylet out. Never pull the stylet out unless you're holding the tube. It'll pull it right back out. They'll be really pissed. <laughs> and, oops, there was one thing you did that was wrong here. Oh, you inflated the cuff? No. No. Well, this has got to be pulled back, right? Now shove half of that in there. Yeah. Okay. Oh, too much. Oh. That's okay. That's fine. <laughs> well, that's not exact. Okay, so now the question is, he intubated. Is it in his stomach or is it in his right lung? So there are three places it'll go. Trachea, stomach, right lung. How am I going to know? Well, you see, your other job was to take that mask off and start bagging and see, okay? Stethoscope. Oh, there's my stethoscope. Okay, method number one, physical assessment. Is the bagum? Is the chest rising? Well, look at the little blue chest there rising. Okay. <laughs> method number two, left, right, okay? If you want, come over here. Let's look here, 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 and then here. Bag, bag them. I want to listen to the stomach. I don't hear anything in the stomach. I've got bilateral breath sounds. Okay. What centimeter mark is it at? I didn't look. No. <laughs> so see, the poor person assisting the intubation is supposed to do all this stuff at once. Right. Have the bag, get the mask off, check that. Because why are you checking that? Why are you checking the number at the mouth? Why? Why? Because I think he's intubated properly, so he better stay at that number, and you have to secure the tube, so you have to make sure it stays at that number. You're responsible now. The doctor just intubates and walks away, and you have to make sure they're actually really intubated. You could say, oh, wait a minute, he only has breast sounds in his right lung. Probably shoved in too far. We'll probably pull it back until we hear bilateral breast sounds. Only in the stomach, get that tube out immediately. If you keep bagging while it's in the stomach, it's all over, man. You're going to blow up their stomach, they're going to barf. It's, it's horrible. So if you think you're in the stomach, you pull that tube back out. Deflate the cuff, pull it back out, and start bagging. Okay, but you have to secure the tube in the right place. What is the mark? 19. 19, okay? That's a little bit high. Huh? It should be more like 21. But we don't care, because i got bilateral breast cells. I'm fine. This is an emergency. I'm fine. We can secure the tube. Now, method number two involves a different technique, okay? So this is one way. This is called an EDD, esophageal detection device. If this sucker is in the esophagus, this is what will happen. Okay? If it's in the trachea, this is what will happen. Okay? Because if you're in the esophagus, the vacuum will make it collapse. And it'll just, it'll just look collapsed like that. It won't, but if it's in the trachea, it'll be air. It'll just pop back open. That costs almost nothing. That's not what most people use. <laughs> Here's the, I'll, I'll open one of these when we do lecture, because they only work when you open them. These devices are a method of detecting CO2. It's not a capnometer. It's colored paper, pH sensitive paper. CO2 is an acid, pH sensitive paper. The CO2 and the moisture from your air hits it, and it changes color, and you know they're intubated. Here's some different brands. So you, most hospitals and paramedics the next step will be to stick one of these things on there. Or this one will actually go on the bag. Some of the bags. <laughs> well, this won't go on the airway. This one right here is made to go on the airway. There was just a recall of neonatal ones. They were defective. Oh. Great. <laughs> right? It did something. You know, this is dead space. So on a baby, they have to be really small. So anyway, this just tells you if they're intubated. Like, um, well, this one goes blue, green, yellow. Yellow is what you want. That's 5% CO2. That's normal. Same thing here. This thing will go purple when they inhale, and it'll turn yellow when they exhale. So they'll change color. I'll show you one later in, in class, because I'll bust one out. It costs about $15. I'll bust one out and demonstrate it to you, and you'll see the color change. It's not a capnometer. It can't really tell you how much CO2 it is. It just tells you they're probably intubated. And there can be false positives and negatives. We'll save that for lecture. Okay, so that's my secondary. What's the gold standard? of ET tube placement for the X-ray. So after we do all this, and after we've got the guy stable, then we'll get an X-ray, because the X-ray interrupts what we're doing. So unless we need to get the X-ray, we'll use physical assessment of these things, detectors, and then we'll say he's intubated. And then we'll get the X-ray when we have when the guy's stable. Because if he's unstable, the X-ray is of no use. But we have to get the X-ray eventually to confirm tube placement.
got to. So guess whose job that is? Oh, it's the guy who intubates him, right? But if the doctor doesn't order the x-ray, because in the ER they might not, might have to get to the ICU, you're the respiratory therapist. Your job is to make sure they get a post-intubation x-ray. So you've done all your physical stuff. You're you know the guy's intubated, but you got to make sure they get that x-ray. Because the tube might be too high, we might advance it a little. Right, where you see the lung disease going on and all that stuff. Now, if they think he has a pneumo, they might get an x-ray right away. But just for intubation, we're not going to get the x-ray until the dust settles. Because the x-ray just confirms. And I already know he's intubated. But you'd, you'd think it wouldn't um, be that way. But um, I know we were down there. Me and a student were watching a code in the ER in Queens because the room was too full. So we were standing outside watching student system. Hey, Steve, when I bag him, doesn't it look like his stomach goes up instead of his chest? Anyway, yeah, glad you noticed. I noticed it too. We didn't say anything. So when they took the guy from the gurney, from the paramedic gurney to put him on the table at Queens, the tube wasn't secured well enough and it came out of his trachea and into his esophagus. So it was, you know. So these things can, even if they're secured, they can move and stuff. We're moving people around. It's crazy. People are yelling, all the blood. There's all this stuff going on. So you're always confirming tube placement by breath sounds and chest rise, the doctors, someone will intubate and they'll go, oh, you don't need to check, I know he's intubated. Well, that's fine, but it's my responsibility to confirm. And it's a, it's a requirement for all ACLS providers that they know how to confirm intubation because the patient will die. If they're not intubated, it's in the right lung only, they can, you can pop their lung, right. all kind of crap happens, so, okay? So now we'll secure the tube. Um, I don't want you guys to practice on this mannequin because um, you know, I immediately had problems with that. I'll switch them out with that one. Okay, now to extubate, very similar. Um, we're going to deflate the cuff, but what happens when you deflate a cuff? There's all, this secre no, there's all these secretions pooling above the cuff. Oh, yes, so what you have to do is you suction their lungs, then you suction their throat. Then I have this really cool trick if you'd like to see it. You have to assist me. Okay. When I tell you you deflate the cuff and I'll squeeze the bag. Okay? So because of because where where will the breath go if the cuff is deflated? Out the mouth. So deflate the cuff. No, no, like oh. one big quick pull. Oh. Just pull it back. The secretions will just blow up into their mouth and you can suction them. Because if you suction the throat of a awake patient, they'll start gagging and freaking out. So anyway, but you have to clear the lungs first, then clear the secretions above the cuff by some method, either suction the throat or blow it up into their mouth. And then you can extubate them. Untape the tube. And extubation, yeah, this is really tight, huh? Extubation is really simple. Once you've untaped your tube, uh, and I'll, I'll show you again. I just thought we'd just do this right now. We'll practice this as a procedure. We have them in the bed, right? We'll sit them up so they don't aspirate. We'll put a towel on their chest so we don't make a big mess. Nurses don't like that. And so I got the guy sitting up, and I've got my oxygen ready. So I'm going to pick him up. I suction him, suction his throat, deflate the cuff, untape the tube, okay? And then I tell him, take a deep breath. So watch this. <laughs> Put him on the oxygen, and then auscultate the neck. You can listen to the lungs too, but the neck is critical because that's where you hear strider. And if this thing causes a lot of inflammation, that's what you hear. And if he's in trouble, then we got to do something. Otherwise, he'll obstruct the airway and we'll let the trach in and all that stuff. So, so after you extubate, when you intubate, you listen here, here in the stomach. After you extubate, here, here, of course, but then you listen here specifically, listening for strider because that's when you're going to hear it. And you might have to give drugs, and you might have to call anesthesia, you might do all kinds of stuff. The longer they're intubated, the more likely they're in trouble. But see how easy that was? Sit them up, suction the lungs, suction the throat, deflate the cuff, cut the tape, pull the tube, put them on oxygen, assess them. They cannot eat or drink after extubation. They can only have ice chips, because they might, their, their throat will be working right now aspirate. So usually for 24 hours, no eating or drinking, just ice chips. Then, then after eight hours of ice chips, maybe a small amount of clear like water. So they'll have a sore throat, they may have a horse voice. But, listen to guys. Okay, let me get a mannequin set up so we can intubate. But I got this other guy intubated and I want to do this MLP-MLV 